right, thanks for staying with us. Now, productive youth engagement is the meaningful participation of young people in activities that contribute to their own development and the development of their communities. It can include a wide range of activities such as education, career advancement, unemployment, and health, and um, which is you know wellness, drugs. Governance plays a pivotal role in productive youth engagement and a good governance structure is one that creates an enabling environment where young people can thrive and reach their full potential and ensure that they have a voice in the decision-making processes that affect their lives. It's no news um, that good governance has been a major challenge facing Nigeria and other developing countries as they, um, as they strive to overcome developmental challenges. So today we're asking what is the role of governance in productive youth engagement and we're focusing on Kano State. Now please let's hear what you have to say. Remember you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 1803 Jela, I want to quickly hear your thoughts on productive youth engagement. When you hear the word youth engagement, what comes to your mind? Mm. Well, the active participation of um, youth in within the spheres of governance and um, the sustainability of it mm. not just you know for the now but you know having the right process the right systems in place that ensures the continuity of that you know over time because uh, i think um, with youth engagement and youth participation you're guaranteed um, continuous fresh perspective in the areas of governance which can be actually good for nation building mm. awesome Awesome. So for me, when I think productivity, I think empowerment, mm. I think um, um, enlightenment, True. I think all of those things. Because again, um, if we do not have that level of growth, mm. you know, amongst the young people where they are very, very empowered and enlightened, mm. then we're, we're having a big major crisis on our hands. True. All right, so let me bring in our guests. Sanusi Bature, Dawakin Tofa. You will hear my house well today. <laughs> He's the chief press secretary of governor of the governor of Kano State. He is a PR and development uh, development communication specialist with experience in media, international development, and private sector. He is the vice president national operations at Kingstone Organic PLC um, UK and the director stakeholders engagement at Nigeria Yieldwise Program. So you see, went to Bayero University Kano um, and. Um, Kano State, Nigeria, and has an MSc in social work with specialization in community development at Ladoke Akintola University of Technology, Laotech, a show. Mm. Hi, <laughs> can you imagine? Mm. In other than going everywhere. Thank you so much, Sumisi, for joining us this evening. Finally. Thanks have for me. having me. Yes. <laughs> finally, in, in finally, your studio. Finally, in my studio in Lagos. Yes. We've, we've been chatting back and forth, back and forth. Wow. I'm yes. coming, I'm not coming, I'm coming, I'm not coming. Wow. But at least now you have a bit of time to see yes. us. So for us, right, we know all the drama that is happening around Kano State right now. Yeah. But something very um, strong struck me when the gov governor just assumed office. I remember when he was talking about, I think, curbing phone theft amongst young people. And I know that he had a lot of promises around, you know, youth engagement. And yeah. for me, if I ever want to have a conversation around governance, I really don't want to, sorry, I don't want to deal with your political yes. <laughs> issues. But I, I want you to help us paint a picture of where the young people are right now in Kano State. Bear in mind that youth population, mm -hmm. right, across Nigeria, they occupy 70%. Of our population it's not a, it's not a, it's not a population to joke with mm. and again even with the recent happenings around young people right in the music industry and all the things that have happened in recent times there is no better time you know to shine the spotlight on the things that we can do as a government you understand to engage our young minds so tell us first of all what is the youth terrain like in Kano State and you know how far in terms of engagement has your governor done with young people? Yeah, uh, well, uh, let me start by enumerating some of the challenges that were set to tackle, or we have started tackling in the first 100 days of the administration of Engineer Abakabir Yusuf. Uh, you know, you, when you talk about uh, engagement, involvement, participation, and what have you, uh, our type of politics or our ideology in politics 
is actually tilted towards ensuring that youth, both men and women, are involved at any stage. So therefore, before the elections, we were able to engage a lot of youth to have those ideas, beautiful ideas from them in whatever the politicians were going to do and then the blueprint we are going to also develop for the benefit of the state. Mm. So right from the onset, we are determined to do a lot of things that has direct bearing with the youth involvement. So mentioning the issue of challenges, Kano in particular have been bedeviled with the issue of fund snatching. Over 100 people have been killed in the, in the last few years uh, in an attempt to snatch their phones, including very important human beings, very serious professionals, medical doctors, pharmacists, engineers, were killed in the street of Kano because some hoodlums wanted to snatch their phones. So this is one of the major challenges that His Excellency is set to really tackle before the election and is written in his uh, blueprint that he's going to declare a state of emergency on phone snatching. <clears throat> so the second major issue affecting Kano in the last 10 years will be leading in the issue of drug abuse. Thank you. So drug abuse has some multiplier effects to other crimes. Arm robbery, kidnapping, uh, uh, rape, rape yeah. and some other things, a lot of things. A lot of vices, yes, actually. Yeah. Exactly. So therefore, when he was elected as a governor, immediately after the swearing-in, what His Excellency did from the swearing-in ground, he straight went to the Kano Reformatory Institute that was established by the former governor of Kano State, Senator Rabi Musa Konkosu. It is among the 26 Institute of Secular Accusation for Youth established by Konkoso, and all of them were closed down by Ganduja administration for eight years. So he visited the school in Kiru, and he ordered the immediate reopening of that school so that drug addicts can be enrolled there, and not just enrollment, after the so psychosocial therapies that they will undergo, mm -hmm. and the medication, they call it the intoxication. Mm -hmm. So there, are, there will be some, some injections they will yeah. take, some drugs they will take mm -hmm. to deactivate the, the, the effect, effect of the drugs the in their them. blood. Mm -hmm. So after that, they will be trained on different skills, and some of them would be sent back to school, those that have required uh, a qualification. Some would be trained on different skills and they would be given startup capitals, tailoring, carpentry, and some other jobs. So the school is now reopened and we have started searching for the beneficiaries. And then he also constituted a tax force on drug abuse. Because in his blueprint, there's an issue of establishing an agency, an anti-drug abuse agency, that will work in company of the NDLEA, police, military, and all other security agencies to curb the menace of drug abuse in the state. But before that, because establishing an agency is a long process, you have to do a law, and you have to do a lot of things. So His Excellency decided to have that tax force of retired uh, commissioner of police, retired NDLEA personnel, and then the serving NDLE command in Kano and the Kano Police Command, all are members of that uh, tax force. So they have been going around uh, trying to arrest some of those that are hiding in different places to do that. And then another thing, which is the root of all this, is this uh, are the suppliers of the drugs into the state. Yeah. <laughs> so all their hideouts, the markets, and the places that are hiding to sell the drugs to those uh, addicts mm -hmm. have been tackled. So we stopped them from the source, and then we're trying to, to enroll them into the reformatory area. And then he also appointed Senior Special Assistant Reformatory Institute. Because in Kano, we have private reformatory institute far from those that are owned by the government. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we need to regulate them. What are their syllabus, what they do, how they do their things, what are the type of things they do in the sun for regulation purposes. So therefore, we'll have the government and the private one because some people will prefer to go to private, private, yeah, private reformatory yes. institute. Mm -hmm. Yes. But the government should have a hand in regulating those uh, institutions as well. Mm -hmm. So we have done that. And uh, to tell you, 
within the first 100 days of His Excellency, there was no single report of fund snatching. Hmm. There was no single report from the police or DSS for fund snatching in Kano. And he was able to bring back the street light across the metropolitan area because some of them are hiding under that Darkness, dark areas, yeah. the blind spots, so that they can just rob people of their phones. So therefore, the street light have been restored, uh, restored in all the places, so there will be no hiding place. And then the security are always on monitoring and surveillance and what have you, so that nobody will have the opportunity to rob anybody within Kano Street. So this on the aspect of the negative. And he also been proactive because we have engaged hundreds of thousands of views during our campaign. And we ensure that we don't deal with a drug addict, we don't deal with a uh, uh, political talks because we don't promote political thuggery. So most of the youth we engage are well educated youth. Some of them they finish secondary school, some of them have diploma, some NCE, some are in the university, some have graduated from the university. Mm -hmm. So he categorized them into different uh, uh, levels. Those that have no secondary school certificate, just last week he established Kano Street, uh, street sweepers. Mm. 3,000 of them were engaged to be sweeping the street and they will be given monthly allowance. 3,000 of them. Uh, of and them. I say your streets in Kano need sweeping because yes. the last time I visited Kano, <laughs> when we were to bury my, my, my father in law, Omo, the streets were dirty. Aha, uh -huh. it was exactly. very dirty. So, so that initiative has taken place. Mm. It was launched, I think, about uh, one between one week to ten days ago. Yeah, yes, that's for the for the ones that do not have exactly um, for the informal secondary school, secondary school yeah. certificates. Exactly. exactly. Mm. And then for those that have secondary school, and for those that are in school already, in colleges of education and polytechnics, you know the issue of. Uh, removal of oil subsidy mm. created a lot of chaos. Some people I had in the news here in Lagos that some people are uh, even dropping from the university, from the tertiary institution because they cannot be able Afford, to pay yeah. the tuition fee. So in Kano, we have over 10 tertiary institutions, including two state owned universities yeah. Kano University of Science and Technology and the Northwest University, Kano. Those two universities and other tertiary institutions, instead of increasing. The, the tuition fee. His Excellency said the current tuition fee before the full subsidy removal should be reduced to 50%. So you see somebody going or studying NCE diploma at the rate of less than 10,000 Naira as a registration fee per session. And those that are in the university are paying just above 10,000 Naira per session. So therefore, the thing is just easier because we don't want to because anytime the issue of out of school children or issue of education is reported across the globe they will say nigeria nigeria northern yeah. nigeria and cannot contribute a lot why because of the population of the state mm -hmm. so if you do a pro rata approach Kano is always higher because we have a large population over 20 million people mm -hmm. at the moment so therefore, we don't want anybody. We need people to be so educated. So the government is as much as in in education yes. to make sure that children stay in school. Yes. Exactly, for access purposes. Mm. You understand? Mm. And that's not enough. The previous administration had a backlog of the SSCE fees with the NACO. And the current year, this year, this 2023, the students were not paid. So on assumption, within the first month, His Excellency paid 1.6 billion naira to settle the NECO examination for 57,000 students wow. that will be writing SSCE. Because if they didn't write the SSCE, they didn't cross between the secondary yeah. and tertiary. And, tertiary. and some of them will just be at the communities uh, trying to create mayhem, mm. become political thugs, they'd be drug addicts and what have you. So uh, 57,000 students were saved under that initiative as well. Then on the other side, if you go to university education, we have one federal university which is called Bayero University Kano. Mm. The governor don't control that university, it's a federal university, and they have no option because of the removal of forced subsidy. They will have to increase the registration fee. It was around 40, 50, 60, and they doubled it to... 80. Not even 80, over 100. 100 okay. Yes, some will pay 120, some 50. Some special courses like uh, medicine are even paying around 180,000. 
So a lot of Kano indigent students decided to abandon their studies because they cannot pay and their parents cannot pay. So because of that outcry, His Excellency decided to pay for all the 7,000 indigent students, 7,000 of them in Bayer University, pay all their registration fee for this year, for the 2023-2024 academic session. That's amount to 700 million Naira. Mm. He settled all this. Again, in 2011, mm. during the Concourse Administration, he introduced the foreign and domestic scholarship for undergraduate and first graduate, mm. where over 7,000 Kano youth were trained in different countries and in some private universities within the country. At the moment, we have over 3,000 PhDs that benefited from that scheme in 2011. Wow. Some of them, over 100 of them, are now associate professors working in different universities. Mm. So part of the blueprint of His Excellency, he said he's going to reintroduce that program because Ganduje abandoned it. So on assumption in office, we just published an advertisement that anybody with a first class, an indigenous of Kano, should apply. To tell you, I'm happy to tell you, that right now, most of them are in Abuja. Some of them have gotten their visa. 1,001 first class holders, Kano indigen, are flying to 14 different countries around to study master's degrees. Yes, around the globe. Wow. All That's of them it. are youth. That is a good place to take a break. In fact, this is really good reports. I mean. <laughs> Stay with us, we'll be right back. All right, so if you just tuned in, we're having an amazing chat with Sanusi um, on the Kano State, um, as, um, Kano State, right, and their their plans for youth engagement, right. Now remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to zero eight one eight zero three eight four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Wisho Africa One with hashtag Wisho. I mean, dear I'm sure you have so many questions because the way um, Sanusi is just talking, like. My body does this with me because you know anything that has to do with young people, I mean, you're already, I'm already sold out. I, I really love a lot of things you've mm. said. I like the idea because I know about that education program that um, Kokonso did. Yes. And I know that, you know, for the period of Gandhi Day's um, um, leadership, eight years in government, there was no continuity. Yes. And, you know, and for me, every time, like you rightly said, whenever there's a mention of Northern Nigeria, the next thing is, you know, people don't go to school there. I was born, bred, buttered in Kaduna State. Mm. And now we go school pass. People that live in the North, they go to school. But there's something that, you know, I've been pressing to ask because I know that many, many, many years ago, when my mother needed to go to Dubai, she used to go to Kano State, you know, then take the flight and all of those things, right? Yeah. Kano is a commercial hub yeah. for the North. Like it's the biggest market. Yeah. So the way you have vibrancy in Lagos is the way you should have vibrancy um, in Kano. Um, what happens when we, what happens, and this is why we're having this conversation, what happens where we neglect the, the very boisterous and youthful population is that you find issues around these drugs, you find issues around crime and all of that. So beyond education, right, there's a part of education which are fantastic, right? What would real empowerment mean for a Kano State um, young person today? What would real empowerment mean to them? Because you see, what empowerment means to me, yeah. living in Lagos is completely different for what it will mean to someone living in Kano State. Mm. You know, so are these measures taken by the government or by the governor, His Excellency, the issues around sorting out the bills on education, sorting out the bills on learning, then sending people abroad and all of that. Are these real, uh, would it make sense to a kind of person that yes, the governor is doing something for me? Well, um, yes, you know, before you do empowerment, you have to profile the beneficiaries mm -hmm. because uh, uh, you have to understand the social status of the beneficiaries so that you'll be able to determine what they need and what you can support them with. Yeah. Part of this, uh, in collaboration with uh, some uh, charity organizations, uh, the Kano governor is distributing uh, uh, some, some palliative in terms of uh, Nera and Kobo to, uh, 
to the poorest of the poor rural uh, uh, yes, dwellers I of 10,000 10, naira, 10, well. naira. Mm. because at some point uh, there are people who just need money to survive. Mm. Yeah. So yes, I tell you, if you go to a hard to reach area, you can find somebody that has never seen 10,000 naira of his own mm. in his entire life. So giving him that 10,000 naira under that uh, would make a lot of sense to him. him. Exactly. And a lot of people uh in the rural areas even in the cities there are some people who can use five thousand naira to trade something you understand so therefore another thing he did was to give an automatic tax relief for any local trade so if your capital is, be, is below hundred thousand naira you're selling and buying something along the street you are examined you are exempted from paying tax so that you can be able to grow that business because if you're stop with a paying payment of uh, tax then there will be issue mm -hmm. so that's another uh some tax business holidays can, for uh, people yeah. that truly need it mm -hmm. exactly exactly and then away from that uh there's another type of women and youth empowerment and it's mostly trying to give uh, uh to to focus attention on women uh which is uh, the monthly empowerment so we're now getting ready to start giving fifty thousand naira after a short training of three days to maximum of one week to women so that they can start business at home, backyard farming, uh, maybe some production of uh, uh, detergents or any Whatever other it is that, that money exactly. can, can yes. do for them to yes. be able to raise Yes, money. exactly. So as soon as we start, that will be on a monthly basis across the 44 local government mm. of the state. So that will also reduce poverty. Mm. What we are targeting to do is to reduce poverty and hunger. Mm. Yes, mm. you know, people, a lot of people cannot eat. And um, so that's another thing. And again, you know, Ganduji at the eve of his um, administration employed uh, over 10,000 workers. In the last eight years, he decided not to employ anybody. And there have been job racketeering within the system. People are vying job offers at the rate of 500,000 naira in different agencies. There was never a time when they made an advert. People should apply for a job in the street. And about 30% of the civil servant retired in different sectors and they didn't do replacement. And he is not paying pensions. So therefore, another way, uh, His Excellency stopped that uh, uh, employment immediately because we know it didn't, it didn't follow the due process. So therefore, we are now screening them to ensure who are those genuinely need job? Who are those genuinely meet the criteria for job at what sector? Mm. Because some people might borrow certificate of somebody to just <laughs> apply for a job like that because there was no due process in the mm. process of employment. So after that, after the screening, whatever number we found to be to, to reflect the true picture of employment, mm. they will be given uh, okay. uh, their salaries to continue from where they are. <laughs> but another aspect of the society that we always neglect is the retirees, mm. the pensioners. Pensioners have suffered a lot in Kano mm. because from 2015 till the last day in his administration, Governor Ganduji did not pay gratuity of those that retired from the civil service in the mm. state. This is why young and people are the also monthly, going into fraudulent crime because exactly. they say if i can walk like this i'll be suffering exactly. like this. Rather just, yes. you know. yes. exactly. and you know that that has a ripple effect because those young people are the they sons and daughters exactly so it, it, yes. it then so, also somehow yes. feels crime exactly. well let that dealer come in quickly okay so my question quickly is that um i mean the governor is doing quite this his administration is doing quite a whole lot considering all his plans um, but I want to ask, is there any platform or any process in place for inclusive um, governance where young people are given the opportunity, you know, to voice their opinions and be a part of the decision making in Kano State? Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, let, let, let me confirm to you that I have forgotten. In the State House of Assembly, we have a speaker who is less than 40 years old mm. and we have other members uh, at the early 30s mm. to just give that representation of the youth because state assembly is very 
uh, is a serious arm of government mm -hmm. that requires a strong representation. These are the representation of the people. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. That's one. And then in the cabinet, we also have commissioners that are very, very young. And they are both male and female. Uh, it's a true representation. And then other aides, like the SSEs, the SEs, uh, and some special advisors, you see people in their late 20s, wow. early 30s, were given opportunity to serve the so government. So he is truly a exactly. man for the youth. Exactly. So quickly, and then probably mm -hmm. in the history of Kono, I might be the youngest spokesperson to the I ca government. I can see yeah. that. I was going to <laughs> say that. <laughs> Well, I'm yes. just going to so, ask. Uh, yeah, go ahead, go okay, ahead. I didn't finish there. Yes, quickly. yes. So, so if you're talking about the platform mm -hmm. in Kano, since the during the administration of Rami Konkosu, we have what is called community reorientation committees. Okay. It's at the state level, at the local government level, and at the ward level, and it has representation of women, representation of uh, of, uh, of of religious leaders, traditional leaders, and representation of youth. Mm -hmm. Those committees are in charge of anything to do with the health, education, uh, empowerment at the community level. Mm. So select beneficiary of, uh, selection of beneficiaries on any empowerment will be done through that. Refair of schools that belong to the community, refair of hospital, provision of equipment, staff, and what have you. They are the source of government mm. in terms of what the community so requires. So it's government to so the, the local people. Exactly. Mm. I just wanted to say that two things quickly. The people that go out to study, that mm. they are going, this 1,100, mm. what is the plan to reintegrate them back into the system to come and impact Kano State? What yes. is the plan for that? Yeah, you know, uh, in the context we are today, if you say you are sending somebody abroad with the hope that he, uh, he or she will come back to serve in the state, you don't have the space. You may not have the space. So what we viewed on this initiative is that if you go to abroad, you will have the required international exposure. You can either stay there and work. You have your parent here, and you can contribute to even foreign direct investment because you are earning in dollars or in euro or in sterling pound abroad. Mm -hmm. And you're supporting your people at home. And you might have interest to do a business in Nigeria. So therefore, wherever you are, you are an ambassador of Kano. So we want to take Kano to the world. If you go to China, England, America, you see young men and women from Kano uh, doing a lot of things in business, in universities, teaching, and what have you. So out of those 3,000 PhD that I tell you, a significant number of them are in different countries. I know about, uh, about 50 in Saudi Arabia, about 20 in Afghanistan, about another 50 in Turkey, so they are all there representing Kano and Nigeria as academics. Mm. And they're doing pretty well. Every year they come to Nigeria, visit their family and what mm. have you. So you need to find a way of reducing the burden on the government mm. because you don't have the space. Before, before, if you train somebody, he needs to even sign a contract, yeah. a bond, that you will come back <laughs> in yeah. the same service. So yeah. now you don't need that because because you are producing like 100,000 graduates right. every year and you have a space of less than 1,000 per year. So how are you going to do? So you need to train them on how to, do into to, how to go into private sector, how to go into academic environment in Nigeria and in other states. Okay. Now the advantage we so have in So it means that you guys are comfortable? That, mm -hmm. Yes. So there's <laughs> not any strategic bond. Strategic plan. All we need is that you are capable of that particular course you are studying and you are an indigenous and of you are able Sometimes to we even go beyond your indigenous of Kano, including mm. resident. If you stay in Kano, mm. then we I'm don't relocating. The... What do you come? <laughs> I think so. Too. <laughs> I think you like, I need to pay for my masters. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> in average. But thank you so much, Sanusi. I think yeah. this is actually um, it's been a refreshing conversation. It is. Yeah. I'm looking forward to having an exclusive because again, it's it's beyond the. Um, I, I want us to be able to like take it and now show truly these are the things. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to have a conversation even to the young people too yes. that have benefited from this and how it has impacted their life. Mm -hmm. We're hoping that the governor will uh, will be able to survive this. I, I had one quick question. Okay. This situation now, because I know Kano youths, mm -hmm. they are blood, they are odds. Yes. How? Because I saw that the governor immediately declared um, what's it called a curfew. So how would he manage the emotions of young people in Kano? with the situation around the tribunal ruling quickly. Yes, you know, as the chief security of the state, he needs to be proactive. Yeah. That is why 
immediately after the judgment because the opposition members are aware of the outcome of the judgment because they know in any way or the other how to manipulate the process mm -hmm. so they preempted the judgment so therefore they lined up people to celebrate to come out to celebrate so that they can show they are popular but mm -hmm. they are not popular in any way because we won the election with a landslide victory of over 126 uh, uh, margin mm -hmm. between NNPP and APC so therefore he declared the state of emergency so that he would not allow them to create mayhem because there may be retaliation because mm. NNPP is in charge of Kano. Yeah. So therefore, if the minority group can come out and jubilate, mm. then the majority can, can also... aggravate something. Exactly, because okay. of the nature so of the state. So he's managing yes. emotions. So, yes, so he manages the emotion. And then the following day, mm. there was no any emotion mm. on him. The, the following day, he had the weekly as And he continues his business. He continues well, his business. That's business for you. Yes, yeah. exactly. But thank you so, so much, Sunisi. I think we had a fantastic yeah. conversation. We will take this conversation further. Now, remember, you can join the conversation. Thank you, Diola. Follow us across all our social media handles at Wake Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed our quote here, it is again the power of the youth is the commonwealth of the entire world. The faces of young people are the faces of our past, our present, our future. No segment in the society can match with the power, idealism, enthusiasm, and courage of the young people. This is a very powerful to um, quote, make sure you invest in your young generation. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen.